Hello crafty friends! I'm so glad you could join me today. I'm going to be making some Christmas cards and today I'm going to show you how to color over a foiled um, background. Okay, so I'm going to be using some new products from Spellbinders. This is the uh, Glimmer Essentials Solid Arch. Uh, they also have a solid diamond which I'll show you in another video coming up soon. But right now I'm going to be using this silver hot foil on this Glimmer hot plate and some white cardstock. Um, I think I'm using the Hammer Mill 60 pound uh, cardstock. It's very, very smooth and it works well. But I've used the Nina Solar White and I've also used, I've even used watercolor paper and I get good results with everything. Okay, I'm going to be putting a shim right here and uh, right on top of it because I want to make, since this is a solid hot plate, I want to make sure and get uh, good uh, coverage of that foil. So I'm just rolling this through my die cutting machine very slowly because the hot foil glimmer system works with pressure and heat. So you need both the glimmer hot foil machine and your die cutting machine. And you want to remember to roll it through slowly. Don't go quickly. And uh, then I'll take everything off and we'll see how it turned out. Okay. I'm going to just try to cool it off a little bit. I don't even know if that's necessary, but I'm doing everything I can to try to get the best solid image that I can. And that worked pretty good. Okay, now this is another uh, new release, uh, part of the Glimmer Greetings uh, new release over at Spellbinders, and this is called the Blooming Ornament. And I'm just gonna foil right on top with some purple foil. So that way I'll have um, another image on the inside of this solid arch. So you can see this purple foil here. I'm just gonna trim it down to size, and then I'll just uh, be ready to foil it. And this is really a beautiful, um, result when you do sort of a double foiling or foiling on top of foiling. I think that's really neat. So I'm just going to decide how to get this on here and lay it out and then use some um, low tack tape to keep it in place. Because you want to turn it over so that the hot plate is, or the the um, glimmer hot plate is touching the um, that gold glimmer plate itself. And then the light will tell you when it's ready and you'll run it through again slowly. And then you'll see the beautiful result. And then I'm actually going to color over uh, on top of that foil with some Pitt Artist Pens by Faber-Castell. Those Pitt Artist Pens, I know a lot of multimedia uh, people use them because they will color over slick surfaces. So that's kind of cool. So I've got these, um, and these are the brush uh, pens so they have a little flexible tip that's kind of like a brush and so I'm going to go ahead and uh, use these different colors I believe this is magenta and I'm just going to color in that flower now you do want to make sure that you give it time to dry because if you don't you touch it it will uh, pick up some of the ink and you'll have to end up going back over it which is what I do a little bit later so learn from me and don't make that same mistake now, I didn't try to do uh, any blending with these, uh, you know, or put any shading or anything like that. I just went over with the one color. You can try to go over it more than once to get a little bit of a darker, uh, but I'm not sure. And this is the Flato Green, I think that's what that's called, for the leaves. And you can see that you get a really beautiful result. I really like this. This is kind of fun. And then I wanted to make sure that it wasn't um, it wasn't picking up any of that silver foil and messing up my brush tip. So I just brushed it off on some cardstock on the side, and it was fine. Um, and this, I'm sorry you couldn't see that. Um, that's just an. I'll look. I'll have a link down below for the different colors for you. So I used two different reds and two different greens. The, there's two different kinds of leaves on this. And uh, there's two different kinds of flowers, so that's why I chose to use two different colors of red and green. I think that looks so pretty. Okay, now Spellbinders does have some dyes that you can use to cut out your images, but I did not uh, purchase the the dyes. There are the uh, Essentials Solid Arches die set and you get several in the set. They're like a layering die set that you can use. You can use them individually to create the solid shapes or you can layer them to create frames or you can use them to cut out this foiled image too. I just uh, 
freehanded it with my scissors. And then you can see I'm just going back over that only because I touched it before it was dry. So make sure that it dries. Once it dries, it's fairly permanent as long as you don't rub it uh, or anything really hard, uh, the image will stay on there. Okay, and I decided to go with some purple paper for the background. So I'm just trimming the paper to leave a quarter of an inch and, with my trimmer, but I don't have, um, I guess I could have used a round die to do this, but I just decided to freehand it again. And perhaps using a circle die would have been better. And what would have been perfect would be to have those uh, coordinating die sets from Spellbinders, which I didn't have. So now I'm just gonna put my card together with this double-sided adhesive. And I did trim, trim down that purplish pinkish uh, background to a quarter of an inch smaller. Now I'm going to use some Stick It. This is some uh, double uh, sided adhesive that I'm going to use on this purple paper. And I'm going to use it to cut out the words Merry Christmas. This is another die set from last year from Spellbinders. Uh, it's, um, I can't remember what it's called, Christmas Sentiments. I think something like that. Build a Christmas sentiment stamp set is what it is. And I'm just going to put that on my cardstock. Now I do think that when I'm finished with this I decide that I want a different color of uh, to go on this for the words. So I think I, instead of redoing it I think I just got out my Zig uh, marker and colored it. I'm not sure. We'll see in just a moment. I think I just, uh, maybe I redid it. I can't remember. But anyway, so you'll see here that when you take it out of the die, it's got that white release paper on the back. Uh, so you just have to remove that. I love this Spellbinders one uh, tool in one to be able to do that. So yeah, you see here I did color it with my Zig Wink of Stella. And then I ended up not liking it, so I just went with a lighter color anyway, which you can see in this image here. Okay, now for my second card, I used a different technique. You can see on my hot plate that I have a piece of foil that's already been foiled. That was done on a separate piece of paper. And then I'm gonna use the solid arch with that negative foil there so that instead of having one solid uh, arch, I will have an uh, arch with the lines that were created from the foil, from a, the separate piece of paper. So you can see there that that foil had been foiled previously. And so that left the lines. And those lines came from the Cross Lines Card Front Glimmer Hot Plate from Spellbinders. And now I'm gonna be using this blooming ornament. Now this is meant to create an ornament for Christmas if you use it with all of the pieces that come in the set. But I'm just gonna be using the floral portion today with some gold foiling and that's going to create um, that beautiful gold blooming ornament. But I'm actually gonna just cut out the floral portion with my scissors to use as a um, another focal point for my card front, which you'll see in a minute. So I'm just gonna foil this through my foiling machine. Again, you wanna make sure that that foil plate is against the hot foil plate and uh, leave it for a few minutes. You can use the timer there, just click that little timer button and it'll let you know when it's ready, but I was just rushing through and it came out fine. So you can see here the result that you get. And then you can color that with your alcohol markers, which is what I'm gonna do here. So I'm using the PP1 and, and three, and the CT1, and then the green one, which I didn't catch. So I'll have those linked down below. But I'm just coloring this image with these beautiful colors. I love these light pink colors. I think they're so gorgeous and dainty. And you do wanna be careful not to color over the gold lines, so that's why I'm taking care and just kinda, of, I sped up the video, but I am going slowly to make sure that I don't cross over those lines. And then later on, I go back and add some shading, but right now I'm just getting the basic colors down. And then I use the darker pink, the PP3 for those little berries. And then for those little flowers on the side that are a bit different, I decided to color them with a CT1. So now here's the PP3. I'm doing the bud with the PP3. So the buds and the berries are PP3 and the flower itself is the PP1. Um, and then I'm using this LG, I think it's two for the leaves. And there are two kinds of leaves on this flower. Um, so I think I decided to go back later and uh, add, that's why I think I wanted to add some 
shading to sort of differentiate between those two leaves. I'm trying to put some shading here by just going over the bottom portion several times with the same color, but I think when it dries it doesn't give me enough shading, so that's why I decided to go back in with some different colors, some darker colors to shade. And I'm by no means um, an expert colorist, guys. I, I just have, you know, practiced and I've watched some videos and things like that. So here's where I'm going in with the darker colors of the green to add some shading to my leaves. And I think it looks really nice that way. It gives the image a little more life because it adds that dimension. And then I'll come back in with some another pink color uh, in a moment, but right now I'm just doing this green. So right at the base there. It's hard to see on those little ones on film, but in person it looks really good. And then I use CT1 for those flowers, so I think I'm coming in with CT3 to darken those at the just the base. And then I'm using the PP4 to add some shading to the berries. And then the PP3 is what I'm going to use to just blend that darkness there. So it's not quite such a harsh line between the two colors. And then I'm going to come back with my flower. And I think I'm going to use, I think that's the PP3 that I'm adding these little flick marks around the center of the flower. And then I'll come back in with a, a lighter color to blend it, the PP1, just to kind of blend it. I don't want to blend too much because I, I like those sort of little flick marks that looks kind of neat for the center of the flower. So I want to leave that. And I think that will look really pretty. And you can see that I cut some letters out of green gold mirrored cardstock, the Merry Christmas, but I just I think I decided to go with just a plain cardstock for the words. And I'm just trimming it by hand and then I'll assemble it just like I did with the purple card. I wanted to put a darker green background behind the golden arch. And then I wanted my uh, green background here to, to be a quarter of an inch smaller than the rest of my card so that white card base would show through. And that's Nina Solar White 110 pound uh, cardstock for the card base which I always use. I just buy a big ream of it from Amazon and then I have it. It lasts all year, more than a year, depending on how many cards you make. And I'm going to use some foam adhesive. Uh, this is double sided foam adhesive. So it'll stick to your image and then when you peel up the release paper it'll stick to your card. And now here are my words. I did cut it out of green and black cardstock because I wanted to create a shadow for those words. So I'm just going to use my finger to apply this Tombow Mono and then that word Mary will be ready to adhere to my card. I'm going to use my tweezers to place it on my card. And it's still wet and sticky so I'm just going to take the word Mary and put it offset it just a little bit so you'll see that black shadow for the word Mary. I'm just using my tweezers to align it and I will do the same thing for the word Christmas which you can see here and then that will be my card for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to um, subscribe so you can see more videos. There's a final look at the two cards I made for today. Head on over to Spellbinders to check out the new Glimmer Greetings collection that was just released July 14 and I will see you guys back here soon. Thanks so much and have a wonderful day.